This is the new Turnigy 9XR radio. In many ways it's a perfectly fine radio. It's certainly better than the $50 it costs. But uh, there is one major shortcoming. The buttons on the cross here is not very exact. You don't really feel when you pushed it to, to the limit. You get no tactical feedback. It's all spongy. Not good at all. The same goes for the menu and exit button. It's also a bit spongy. Hard to know when you pressed it. These two are actually better but they're in no way good. Today I'm going to show you how to replace the buttons or rather install buttons instead of the spongy rubber default ones. That will improve the tactile feeling of the buttons extremely. It will also be possible to actually feel whether or not you're pressing a button when you're flying. Something that is sometimes very important. I will be using these tiny switches. Okay, that's a small switch. I will start by unscrewing all 10 screws holding the back cover to the radio. I um, have increased the speed a bit so you won't have to endure me unscrewing all these 10 screws for too long time. Uh, you should take note not to unscrewing but rescrewing them, not to over tighten them because then you will destroy uh, the hold for the screws in the plastic and you won't be able to tighten it again. And there are all 10 are done and I'm opening the case. The buttons are situated under the main PCB board, right under here and here. So we need to disconnect all the contacts on the board, unscrew the four screws holding it down and removing it. I'll start doing that now. And I've sped up the time yet again. Take some care when you loosen that one because it's um, fragile. I will actually break this here, it went broke off, it doesn't really matter but you should take care not to break uh, more contacts than necessary. Okay, the white ones on the outside are pretty easy to get off. It's the beige ones in the middle that are difficult. And I think I'll have the, yeah, that's the last beige one. And here comes the screws. There are just four of them. And in a second we'll have the board free. I will now lift the PCB straight out. And the PCB has the display connected by this yellow line here and we'll get both out like so okay this one goes to the left and this one goes to no the right sorry this one goes to the right and this goes to the left these are the buttons that you press from the front and these black things here will be the ones in contact with the PCB. We will install small uh, small uh, switches between here and the PCB. Okay, I'll start soldering. The soldering is done and all the buttons are in place. And these will go on top of the buttons like that. And that. Okay, so it's time to reassemble everything. So everything is now back in place. Uh, this is actually the second attempt. The first time around I didn't get one of the switches right, so I had to Deassemble it again and remount it and I'll try, let's see. Okay. 
Yeah, feels perfect. Okay, so I'll assemble it all again. And before I close it back up, I'll turn on power once and see that things work. Yeah, it works. Another good idea before you close the radio up is to check that uh, all the switches work. And you can do that in this menu called Diag. Okay, switch each switch should change the value like that. Okay, and uh, now it's time to put everything back together. Um, the case is on and the screws go in. I've sped up the recording a bit since it's quite boring and I won't even show uh, all the screws. Um, and here's the finished result. There is a very nice feeling to the buttons and I think that if you had problems with sticking buttons the buttons when they stick along this border this was also fix it because you can't depress them as long here they won't go as deep so that was all for today